This is our viral for the health department, center of the health district, and for our people, the center of ten tribal districts. Our community center in the district is the meeting house Takitimu, named for one of the canoes of the migration. There are over 4,000 Maoris and some 6,000 Europeans in the Wairo Bararan County. Here the population looks what it is, about half and half. But many outlying centers are almost purely Maori. These are the centers of our ten tribal districts. Mahia, place of origin of the whole of Ngāti Kaumuni. And in times of trouble, our historic place of refuge. Once a month, the leaders from the ten tribal districts journey to Wairo for a meeting of the tribal executive. At these monthly meetings, one of the most urgent topics discussed is tuberculosis. Today, there is to be a film lecture on the disease and the district nurses have been invited to attend. shows that tuberculosis, TB for short, is in its simplest form a disease of the lungs. But it can spread to other parts of the body, such as the glands of the neck, the hips, and sometimes even the legs, in bad and neglected cases giving cause for amputation. TB is not a Maori disease, or for that matter a Pākehā disease. It is a persistent enemy of all overcrowded places. It is a disease of all mankind. In the tropics, the TB germ thrives in the heat of the densely populated areas. But the germ cannot live in direct sunlight. The intense cold of the Arctic also kills the TB germ. But in the Eskimo houses, where the Eskimo people pack close together to keep warm, the TB germs spread rapidly from mouth to mouth. In Europe, TB is a disease of the slums, where people live crowded together in poor houses, with not much money to buy food and with no land to grow their own vegetables. In New Zealand, there is not much cause for TB, but it does exist, and it's a danger to everyone.
people who can tell us quite a lot about this enemy amongst us, TB, are the district nurses. Let us hear their side of the story. The district nurses spend much of their time looking after TB patients. Most of these are found in overcrowded homes. If there is an infectious case in a home like this, then the other people who live there are likely to catch it also, especially if not in perfect health. The children are in even greater danger than the grown-ups. When an infectious case has to live at such a home, the nurse gets a TB hut for him from the health department so that he may sleep away from those his infection might harm until rest, fresh air and good food have made him well again. Another thing district nurses notice is that there is usually more illness in homes where no vegetables are grown than in homes with good gardens. In this patient, tuberculosis has spread until it has infected a leg. She has been in hospital but is now beginning to recover and is being nursed by her mother. The vitamins in these medicines are not needed by people who eat really good food, but in homes where white bread is the main food and not many vegetables eaten, people are often ill and medicines often needed. Fresh fruit is a great aid to recovery and everyone should have some every day to keep them well. The district nurses and the doctors are sure that poor feeding and poor housing are the two main causes of TB amongst our Maori people. The Pākehā too may have to live in a poor house for a time, but he never stays there long. He keeps on searching until he finds a better house where his wife and children may live in healthier surroundings. The Pākehā has less TB because he gives himself more space to live in, for one thing, so that he avoids infection. And he has less TB because his wife usually feeds him pretty well. Here are greens, wholemeal bread, milk, liver, eggs, cheese, and any amount of fruit. But even with all these advantages of good feeding and good housing, it is still possible to get TB by meeting with infection when overtired or otherwise not in the best of health. TB is a subject which everyone must study. These are the district nurses' conclusions. Now for a doctor's point of view. One of the great problems with TB is early detection, since early detection means early cure. In Taranaki, the Maori people have a mobile X-ray outfit for detecting TB early in outlying settlements. The idea is that everybody should be looked into, or in this way we can cure the TB that exists and prevent more infections from taking place. It costs nothing to make sure that the lungs are working properly. An X-ray photograph is taken as quickly and easily as an ordinary snapshot, but it is far more valuable because it shows the doctor whether the lungs are healthy or not. A few minutes spent at the X-ray unit now may save years of suffering later on.
When all the x-rays have been taken, they are examined by the doctor. He finds that many show no signs of TB. But the x-ray photographs of some people show that treatment is needed to make them well again. And he writes to tell them so. Because the x-ray found the disease in its early stages, most cases need only rest and good nursing, which they can have at a sanatorium. The doctor may advise that some who have TB may be treated at home, in a special hut of their own, if care is taken that the infection is not passed on. All members of the family should go to the clinic for examination, if anyone in the family is found to have TB. From large X-ray photographs and from these examinations, the doctor can see if the disease has spread to other members of the family, and he can check it if they go to the clinic every three months. The lungs are a battleground in the fight against the disease. The doctors can tell us what to do to keep healthy and defeat TB. If we take no notice of what they say, and the enemy TB wins, it means certain death after years of illness. These parents are wise. They know that if all people will help the doctors and nurses, the disease can be conquered. If everyone will take the doctor's advice, then TB will never strike down you or your children or your children's children. Prevention is better than cure. But in some conditions, disease is a certainty. Settlements like this are a danger to everyone. Since the people who live in them travel about. Here is a settlement of people who own thousands of acres of farm and forest, there is no need for them to live like this. As in so many other things, the children lead the way to better health. Outdoor exercise is needed by everyone. And swimming is one of the best and cheapest forms of sport. Another useful and profitable spare time occupation is gardening. Here are vegetables that are good to eat and a great help in building up defenses in the body against TB. But in all the settlement, only one family has built a proper house and moved from the old, overcrowded home. The fact is that this whole settlement needs rebuilding if the people are ever to be healthy. A contrast with Terenga is the new soldier's settlement at Huramur. In these widely spaced homes are all those things that make for easier housework and healthier living.
Urumua settlement is something special for returned soldiers. Perhaps more typical of Maori progress is Iwi Tea. Once this was not so much better than terrain, but it is now improving rapidly thanks to the building of new houses by most families. These new houses are all on the land owned by the families that live in them and paid for out of wages, land rents and family benefits. A porch like this is an ideal place for TB patients. There are still TB huts in Iwitea, but a few more years should show great improvements in health. The people here are good gardeners, though they might still learn to grow more greens, especially greens for the winter. Iwi Tea has long been famous for its eels, a most valuable food. This should become a place that combines a Maori level of community life with a Pākehā level of good health. Everyone who can get it, and children especially, should have eel once a week. Pākehā children, who do not get eel to eat, have to have cod liver oil instead. But the eel is nicer and cheaper. Well-fed children have the best chance of fighting off TB, should they ever become infected. We want to decrease TB amongst our people and wipe it out altogether if we can. But our success will depend very much on individual conduct. In the fight against TB, everyone has its duties. The message for people who have TB is that as long as the doctor says they are infectious, they should keep away from young people. If he says they should go to hospital, then they should go there. If they are at home, then they should stay apart from their young relatives in a hut or a separate porch. It is not people's fault if they have TB, but it would be their fault if they passed on the disease to their children or grandchildren. For everyone, there is a message that they should see a doctor if they have a cough that lasts more than three weeks or an unexplained fever. If it should be nothing, there is no harm done and no cost nowadays. If it is by any chance TB, then the sooner it is found, the sooner it can be cured. The message for parents is that they should try to give each child a room to itself. Though not many families can do this after the first child or two, we can at least ask the children sleep in a room apart from adults, with boys and girls in separate bedrooms. When a room is shared, the beds should be at least six feet apart. Children need plenty of sleep and plenty of fresh air. As important as plenty of sleep at night is a good variety of food during the day. And remember always to wash the hands before touching food. Everyone should have fruit every day, and breakfast is a good time to have it. 
children should have a pint or two of clean milk every day. Probably father here doesn't like milk, except in his tea. But he gets much the same food values by taking cheese on his bread. Eggs to feed children are things anyone with a bit of ground can produce at home. These children go to school with a good breakfast inside them and we want all others to do the same. For young people, the message is that they should choose the workplace where there is plenty of light and air, feed well, that they should take exercise, but not get overtired. Life can be enjoyed without late nights. This TB is an enemy that kills too many of our young people. But it is not an enemy we need fear since we know we can defeat it by better housing, better feeding, and personal care. 